it's fantastic because I've never liked places where rock and roll kind of is to live in. Like I've never lived in New York and until recently I started living in London. But Good morning. Uh, here we are on the number six bus. It's about 8.30 in the morning. Everybody's heading out to go to work. Um, Stanley, this is the bus to Stanley on the other side of the island. Uh, but this has always been considered a, a hairy ride. Well, this part of the island, I don't think most people understand how green, like, it's, it's like in the middle of a jungle, Hong Kong. All these giant 40-story apartments have gone up in the last, you know, in the 70s and 80s. Before that, there was virtually nothing out here. Like everywhere else in the world, there's been a giant boom. There's a million buildings here that weren't here, that's for sure. When I came here, I was only four, you know, just, you know we're going to Hong Kong. You, the thing about coming here, no matter how old you are, is you, you are going into an utterly different culture. It's so unusual and you cannot get it anywhere else in the world. Uh, I lived here for a uh, year or two. We moved around a lot. This is my favorite place. I once climbed up to the roof here. It was on the floor during a typhoon with a, one of those big golf umbrellas. And I uh, <laughs> managed to open it. <laughs> and uh, land out in the garden without hurting myself too much. Uh, my brother down the bottom going, go, go, go. I need perfection. We're now over in Kowloon side, that's the mainland, which is uh, part of China. And we're on the way to KG5, King George V High School, which I uh, went to for first and second form. And now, uh, before I move back to Australia. Look, there I am, in Formula. <laughs> <laughs> the remarkable thing about going back to KG5 is that uh, it was one of the few things I hadn't changed in Hong Kong. Good day. Hi. Hi, how's it going? All right. Bring back old memories? Yeah, it does. Yeah, it all looks, well, that's all new down there, but that was over there. Yeah, that's the new six-form Sanko. Is that a six-form? Yeah, yeah, yeah they, they built it last year. Right. Does it look the same or otherwise? Yeah, 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 pretty much. I mean, there's new buildings around it everywhere, but this all looks the same. Yeah. Show, yeah. show us around? Yes. Yeah. Great, let's go. Yeah. Right. The dreaded canteen. I do remember one teacher, and uh, I, I can say this, but he, I think he was had a bit of a drinking problem. And I remember it was a music teacher. And I wasn't here then. Yeah, I wasn't here. <laughs> a good feeling here. Yeah. It's, it's very relaxed and a good relationships between staff. Would you say you're second one? <laughs> it's a strange feeling to walk back through halls of, you know, when you're a child and all those experiences. It was very nostalgic. <laughs> Hello. Uh, report, I think, yeah. yeah, that's right. <laughs> Interest, yeah. Oh dear. And your yeah. interests at that time were acting, athletics, right. stamp collecting. Stamp collecting. And a bit of a problem with the photograph, I must admit. Yeah. <laughs> Rather immature, but very pleasant. That's about right. Smoking school. How do you feel about being at school here during the changeover? Do you have strong opinions or you don't care at the moment? Or? It doesn't seem like it's going to change. No, it, it doesn't. It's going to change over a period of 50 years. Yeah, I think yeah. there'll be all this hype for one month in July. Mm -hmm. And then in, by September, everyone will be like, yeah, okay, really? so we're on the Chinese roof. So yeah. Yeah. I'm sure it'll be okay. I have a feeling about this place. It always lands on its feet, doesn't it? That's the bell. Yeah.
School's out. School's <laughs> out. That's great. Thank you very much. They were all very positive. I was surprised by how positive they were. There didn't seem to be any dissension at all. You know, nothing's going to change for them. It'll just continue the way it is. In some ways, that's good to see. <laughs> What's happening here is it's a kind of schizophrenia. On one side, people want, they want China to prove to them that they're allowed to continue to make Hong Kong what it is for themselves and for China. And China, I think, has to prove that to themselves as well. Otherwise, this golden goose will lose its neck. Okay, so this is where uh, all the guaylos or the expats hang out. Guaylos kind of means foreign devil. This is where everybody hangs out. Three little streets like this. So here we are uh, interviewing Alice Patton, and uh, we're both uh, Hong Kong files. We were just discussing that we both love Hong Kong. Yeah. Right, it's really good fun. Yes. I love the people, I think, the most. Yes. Everyone's always up and ready to do stuff. Yeah. yeah. We went from living in like a small flat in London with all of us there to like just yeah. me and my mom and dad in this big house, so it gets lonely sometimes. Your father's worked really hard. Yeah, hard work. Did he come home like with his head exploding from... Um... He's quite good at kind of putting work on one side and just yeah. thinking about other stuff. Getting but... on with it. So what do you think is going to happen here? What's the general feeling of your friends? Like positive or negative? Um, it's quite positive with some people, you know, they sort of think it's that it being such a great place, you know, China Nothing won't... Nothing can stop it. Exactly. They yeah. won't dare change it. Yeah. And I sort of agree with that point. Yeah, I kind of believe in the spirit of yeah, Hong Kong. Yeah, But I wish that I could stay until after midnight and yeah. stay for the party or whatever's going to happen. Just see what's going to happen. Because all my friends are going to stay, even yeah. just for a couple of days afterwards, just to check it out. But yeah. I have to be out of here. Okay, so here we are at Club 64 where we're going to meet uh, Rosa, who's a political activist, and uh, most of the people I've talked to seem to think that Hong Kong's going to continue on business as usual after June 30th, and she has different opinions. I'm sure of that, so let's go talk to her. We are yes, and we're praying. Are they right to think, oh, well, Hong Kong's always been a strong place. It's got lots of spirit and passion. No. Doesn't matter what will happen, it'll be okay. No? No, no I don't think. Why? The people would rather escape. They go to the, they stay in other countries like yes. United States, Canada, States, Canada Australia. Australia. Yeah. My family is not rich, simply. Yeah. So that's why I have to stay. Do you worry for yourself? In, of course. Yeah. I am just Do you think touched they by the who police. You, are? <laughs> you just really? Yes. You just stopped by the police. I I'm just released. <laughs> you just released. Because I, I joined the demonstration uh, just uh, two months before. And beforehand, like five years ago, would yeah. that would you have been interrogated by the police? Stopped by the police? It's not so easy, but now it's very really easy. Now it's really easy. Right. I, I I cannot recognize myself. As a Chinese sometimes. Yeah. Uh, but I recognize myself as a Hong Kong people. Yeah. And what I like to do is to do something for Hong Kong. Sure, yeah. Even the political activist we talked to was positive in the end because she believed in Hong Kong. She was searching for an identity. She didn't know whether she was British or mainland Chinese. She wanted to be sort of Hong Kong. But she's positive. She's going to make a change. It's a different kind of lifeguard compared to the ones we have in Australia. The amount of religions that the Buddhism, Taoism, the gods, there's a myriad of gods for every reason. Most of it for money.
Over here we have, of course, the uh, line of water safety. And over here we have the god of wealth. I think there is a lot of culture here, and it comes in all kinds of forms, but at the end of the day, the modern culture is based on where's the box. Okay, so this is Repulse Bay Beach. Everybody comes here for picnics, and uh, it's just packed, like, like Bondi or something. Um, but this is the middle of winter, believe it or not, and uh, this is about as cold as it gets. I used to come down here, lots of people used to come down here for uh, lunch and stuff. And they sold off uh, all the land, I guess, and they made this place over here, these big apartments, where the Feng Shui man came around and said, um, you've got to build a hole right in the middle of it, otherwise the dragon, the dragon that lives up at the top of these mountains, he has to come down here every day, out into the sea. If he does, in big trouble. No one will live there. And uh, the dragon will be you know, pretty upset or something. They put a hole right in the middle of it, as you can see. This is a great invention. Here we are on possibly the longest escalator in the world. It goes all the way down to Central, that's my way. Well, all I can say is I wish they had this when I lived here. <laughs> so here we are on the mid-levels where everybody lives, some rich, poor, young and old. And I found this apartment and thought this is great. I had a little bit of a view of the, the uh, city before all three buildings went up. I lived up there for about four or five years. Had a great time. It's fantastic around here. It's all kinds of interesting people. Except for dragging the luggage up six flights of steps, that was the only problem. Had some really good times here. <laughs> Road kick here. John Farris came over and joined. Uh, me in Hong Kong for a while. Now Charlie, Dave and Tim live there. <laughs> Charlie, Dave, Tim. Really good time. <laughs> shopping, shopping, shopping. Most people come to Hong Kong and they stop off for a night and uh, probably open a counter inside and buy a whole bunch of stuff and uh, go down and continue on to Sydney or go back to wherever they came from. I suppose people just think it's a shopping centre. Okay, welcome to the peak tram. Every tourist has to do it and everyone gets scared. Um, it's a mad idea in the turn of the century and it's still a mad idea now. I think it's one of the few in the world and I think it's about the steepest one in the world. But it's uh, worth it. Okay, so here we are at the top of the peak. It's kind of touristy and all that, but you got to do it. It's uh, one of the best views in the world. All the shines. Baby's down the world in Chanel. You can really see the skyline change. It just goes up. What's this? This wasn't here before a long time ago, at least anyway. So it's incredible what you can do with the rocks. Anything is possible. You're right. Waterfall of some kind. Giant shopping center. This used to be a little shack where the tram would pull up, the old tram, and people would get off. But here we are at the peak anyway, but there is a little bit left of the old Hong Kong. And believe it or not, this is what uh, people used to get into and come up to the top here in Rickshaw. It's against the law now, which is a good thing. <laughs> what was it like growing up in Hong Kong for you? Did you yeah, love it? No, Hong Kong, small city, but very 
very active. You, you can do a lot of things in the one day, same yeah. time, not like Australia. In Hong Kong, you can Fast. just stop. Stop here, shopping, theatre, yeah. meeting, everything. What's up? You got the problem? You're actually an enormous influence. You've been hanging out with Quentin Tarantino. You've been... <laughs> no, I, I've been hanging around with a lot of... Schwarzenegger and all. They are my good friends. Yeah. So, you're a tough guy, huh? Uh, how do you feel about the change and everything? What's it mean to you? It gotta be good. Why? Because the China government have to show the promise to the whole world mm, after it. China take off better than before. Mm. They want to do it better than British. Mm. Because I'm Jackie Chan, I cannot lift the six million people. No, I agree. Everybody, <laughs> I agree. everybody yeah. likes me and they support yeah. me for many, many years. Yeah. So I have to stay. Look, look, Hong Kong. Yeah, let's look at that. Yes. What? It's the best, isn't it? Yeah. It's killer. It's a... I love it. <laughs> so what kind of music do you like? Oh, music. Mm. Actually, I like all kinds of music. But yeah. really music I like is a slow song. You are always on my mind. Yeah. You are always on my mind. Yeah, then I can yeah, from the singing. Then I, <laughs> I can from the song yeah. to learn some English. And also I can yeah. really use can yeah. under, my, my real life. Understand it. Then when you talk to the yeah. girl, you, See, like, you are always yeah, on my mind. Yeah. Yeah. the most pragmatic people, inscrutable people, who, who carefully map out every little financial decision and then zip down to the races and throw it on a horse. <laughs> Hong Kong Chinese will gamble on anything, cockroaches and flies, whatever comes around the corner. Yeah. Babies, boys or girls, yeah. mahjong. Yeah. Why do they love horses so much? Horse raising mm. is uh, more complicated. Yeah, more so exciting. They can use their brains and, and yeah, use the brain and mm. uh, uh, it's not it's not just hundred percent for the luck. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> well, what's this? What's this you got? Uh, this is the customer input terminal. More convenience for the gambler. Let's bet together. It's like yeah, a team. Yeah, I I love the, the horse number six. Number six. And the uh, number three. And number three, why? You just, uh, you just know. My inspiration. <laughs> number three, three, and number and six. Number six. Amount? Amount. Amount. Yeah. T. Send the bets. Send the bets. And they're done. Yes, come on! And then seven. 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 This is the last bastion of laissez-faire capitalism. There's nothing else like it. Anything is possible if you just put that bet down on that horse, and everybody believes in that feeling. You know, it could, it, that it could be around the corner, and just seems to keep them going. One choice still is a kind of a red light area, I suppose. In the Vietnam War, it was R&R uh, &R Central. But now that's all changed. And it's more likely you're going to find it full of karaoke bars and restaurants and stuff. OK, so this is um, our final moments in Hong Kong. <laughs> so we thought we'd kill a song for you, karaoke style. Get you know the run, get on the highway, looking for adventure, never ever come our way. This will become a kind of little star in the sky to be looking at, to watch, to see, hope, let's, let's hope that little light doesn't go out.